Hi everyone, welcome to Wild Voices Online. Um, we're just getting started for today. We'll give everyone a few minutes to log in and join us. Um, while we're waiting though, I'm going to put up a poll for today, just a question for you to think about while we wait for others to join us. My question for today is, what type of tree is Canada's tallest tree? Canada's tallest tree. Is it a grand fir, lodgepole pine, sitka spruce, western red cedar, or a western hemlock? You can think about that while people are logging in. What type of tree is Canada's tallest tree? Grand fir, a lodgepole pine, a sitka spruce, a western red cedar, or a western hemlock? All right, and just a few more people have joined us. Um, welcome to Wild Voices Online. We're just giving it a few moments uh, for people to log in and join us for today while you're waiting. Just a little uh, quiz question up there for you to see if you can guess the answer. What type of tree is Canada's tallest tree? A grand fir, a lodgepole pine, a sitka spruce, a western red cedar, or a western hemlock? We'll give it a, probably just about 30 more seconds before we get started. Um, but just for people who have entered um, in the last few moments, what we're doing while we wait for Wild Voices Online to start for today is to see if you can guess the answer to the question, what type of tree is Canada's tallest tree? A grand fir, a lodgepole pine, a sitka spruce, a western red cedar, or a western hemlock? Okay, I think I'll give it about 10 more seconds. If you haven't guessed already, uh, you can put in a guess and then I'll tell you which one it is. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, let's see which type of tree is Canada's tallest tree. First, we'll see what you guessed and then I'll tell you. So, uh, most people guess that it's a Western red cedar. Um, and then some people think it might be a grand fir. This was actually a tricky question. Um, the tallest tree in Canada is actually a Sitka spruce. Although I see why a lot of you guessed Western red cedar. And the trick here is the tallest tree is a Sitka spruce. It's called the Carmenaw Giant. It's on Vancouver Island. It is 95 meters tall. Or if you think about a door in your house, just a typical size door, it's about 45 doors tall. However, the largest tree in Canada, which means like the one with the most, the, the one that's the biggest and has like the most wood, basically because it's a little bit, it's not as tall, but it's wider, is, is a Western red cedar. So that was kind of a trick question. So if you guessed Western red cedar, you were pretty close. I see why you guessed that. Um, the largest tree in Canada is the Chihuahua Giant, which is by Lake Cowichan, and it is a Western red cedar. It's only 56 meters tall, which is pretty tall, but not as tall as the Sitka spruce. Um, but it's six meters wide, so it's like three times wider. So that was our little uh, just fun guest question for today. We will get started with Wild Voices Online. So my name is Christine. I work for the Columbia Basin Environmental Education Network. At this time of the year, we're normally sending our educators to your classrooms to talk about environmental education and uh, outdoor learning, um, but we can't do that right now. So we're coming to you at home on Wild Voices Online. Um, there's more sessions just like this on Wednesdays and Thursdays in May and June, and you can check them out at cbean.ca slash wildvoicesonline. So just as we get started here, I wanted to let you know how uh, this works. You are all muted, which means that we can't see or hear you. So if you have a question to ask us, you can click the little speech bubble on that's in your controls, a speech bubble that kind of looks like this, that's the chat box. You can type your question in there to send to us. So if you hear the presenter say something interesting, you wanna know more, um, you can ask us a question through that. 
You can send your questions at any time. Your questions can only be seen by me. So what I'm doing while our presenter is presenting today is I'm writing down your questions. Um, and then when we get to a nice pause point, I'll ask them for you. Um, but just like in the classroom, there might be more questions than we have time to answer. Uh, so feel free to send on your questions, but remember, I might not be able to answer all of them and please be patient with your questions. There's a lot more of you than there are of me. So only send your question one time. I promise I'll have seen it. I just might not be able to answer all of them. Okay. Um, just a super quick question before we get started uh, is what grade level you are in all you students joining us on um, what grade are you in um, just so we kind of know who's joining us today are you in kindergarten grade one two three four five six seven or grade eight or up okay i see people are letting us know what grade they're in i'll give you um 10 more seconds um to let me know what grade are you in 10 9 8 7 6 five, four, three, two, one. Okay, let's see who's joining us today. What grade are you all in? Um, we have the most from grade two, um, but there's someone from every grade joining us today, which is cool. Um, all the way up to grade seven, we have some people in even grade eight and up. So awesome, we will get started with our presentation. So today um, we have Legends of the Forest presented by Darcy O'Hearn. Um, Darcy worked as a forester in all sorts of different places around BC. She now lives in Trail where she writes children's books educating kids about trees. Um, I'll pass it over to Darcy to get started. Hi everybody. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you taking the time. So as Christine said, I am the author of three awesome books and they're all on how to identify trees. The first one being uh, Leonard the Larch. He's got a song and everything. So this is all about the Western Larch and it's going to tell us about why he loses his needles each year. There's a really cool reason why. And if you want to see what he looks like, he's the tree that is actually quite hairy right now. In the fall, he turns orange and all the needles start to fall. And on a windy day, it literally looks like the snow is falling. And the reason why he's losing his needles every year is because he's getting ready to spook us all. You can see that he looks like a spooky skeleton there. So that's about the Western Larch, or AKA Leonard Larch. The second book I wrote is very important. It's all about forest fires and why we need them. So this is about the Western Red Cedar. And it's got some really cool um, projects in here. There's science things like, example, this one here, how to suck an egg into a bottle. Who would have thought you could do that? You can. And the last book I wrote is all about the white bark pine. So this is, I think, the coolest book. And it talks about global climate change and talks about the white bark pine. And it talks about all the different animals that are impacted by a single tree. And it's called the white bark pine. Not the white pine, but the white bark pine. You probably won't see a white bark pine unless you hike way up into the mountains. You either drive, 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 or you can take a helicopter and get plunked at the top of a mountain and you'll see the white bark pine. But we have white pine down here. So let's talk about our first tree. It's called the Western Red Cedar. So this is what it looks like in real life. So how many of you guys have seen this? I see these trees all the time in my backyard and it's actually one of my favorite trees. And the reason why is because these trees can actually speak to us and tell us what kind of cedar tree it is. For example, there's two different types of cedars. There's this one that I'm holding right now. And there's also a yellow cedar. Now here's a question. Um, this cedar right here, I'm gonna take a very, I'm, I want you guys to do this when you uh, go outside, I want you guys to try this. 
you take a very end of the tip, just like this, like that. And then if you were to take a magnifying glass and look at the end, you will see that there is a shape of a W, just like that. It's crazy, but it looks like a W. And that's how I know it's a Western red cedar. Now, question, if I were to take the tip off of a yellow cedar, what shape do you think it would be? Did you guess why? That's right. If you were to take the tip off the end of a yellow cedar, there would be a Y shape at the end. And that's how you identify the difference between the Western red and the yellow cedar. Another indication, as you can see in the picture there, those are the cones that they have. They're tiny little cones. And in that picture right there, they are really closed and small and all the seeds are hidden, tucked really, really deep inside. But this is what it looks like when it is opened up. Now all the seeds are missing and have flown the coop. And so this is what the cone looks like. Now I just wanna show you the difference and amazement. If this is Canada, it's one of Canada's largest tree, it comes from a tiny little cone like this. But let's just say we can compare it to this cone here. Got all these really co cool cones. Look at the difference in size. It's unbelievable, I know. But this cone is specifically from a tree grown in California. You probably won't see this one, but I just wanted to show you the comparison on how something so small can grow up to be so mighty. So that is the Western Red Cedar. Now, the Western Red Cedar has a best friend. Guess what his name is? You'll never guess. It's Douglas Fir. So the Douglas fir is his friend because these two like to spend a lot of time together. Whenever you see a yellow cedar, you're sure to find a Douglas fir. Perfect. See, now this is the true example of a Douglas fir. And I have picked this sample. Um, but one thing I want to say is when I pick my samples, I never take it from a tree branch that looks healthy. I always go down to the bottom and then I'll pick my samples there and then I can put them in the freezer and use them again and again. But what I want to show you right here is this thing right there. Can you guys see it okay? So as you go out hiking right now, you're going to see a difference in the foliage, like in the needles. You're gonna have this dark green stuff, but then you're gonna have this beautiful soft, it's not pointy at all. It's soft and a lot of ungulates, like a lot of deers and stuff. They like to nip off the end, just like that. And then they eat it all up. And you know what? Some people actually eat these. I don't because they don't taste very good, but you could, and a lot of the animals do, but this is super soft. So I want you to go, when you go on your hike, I want you to see the difference. You're gonna have new growth, which is these beautiful soft greens, and then you'll have the dark green, and that's the growth from last year. So this is the Douglas fir, and the Douglas fir also has a friend called the spruce. Now. Bruce the spruce, I don't have a picture of it, but I'm just gonna show you what he looks like. And the reason why is because a lot of people mistaken the Douglas fir and the spruce. So I'm gonna show you the difference. Ouch, ow, and, and whenever I touch him, it hurts. It hurts a lot, actually. So this is the spruce where if you're hiking, um, behind, oh, see, it's really sharp. If you're hiking in the bush, right? Don't be behind somebody hiking in the bush with Bruce the spruce because he will slap you in the face and it will hurt. Now, the reason why I'm gonna, pull, I'm gonna pull out one of these needles, see that? I got one of these needles and then I'm gonna pull out a needle from the Douglas fir. See how they look extremely similar. Now, the difference is, is Bruce the spruce hurts if you poke. It's like you could probably sew with Bruce the spruce's needles. It's really pointy and this one, is really soft. Um, another way is you take the fur needle and you try to roll it in your fingers, it doesn't roll. But if you roll spruce, it rolls back and forth, back and forth. 
And so impress your friends and tell your friends, you know how to tell the difference between the spruce and the fir just by doing the roll check. Okay, so who wants to see what the fir cone looks like? This, um, this one is one of my favorite cones. And the reason why is because, is, see that? It's got tiny little mice. There, that's a good angle. It's got tiny little mice hiding inside of it. As you can see here, there's two little feet and a tail. And there's a legend behind that. And if we have enough time, I'll tell you all about it. But it's got nothing to do with forest fires because I know that some people have heard about this story. It's got nothing to do with forest fires, but I will share with you that later if we have time. So that is the Douglas fir cone. Now I'm gonna show you what the spruce looks like. And that's the spruce. You can tell, and Bruce is legend. He is one of those people that is a little prickly and he, loves self-isolation. He just loves it. He's like, oh, finally, it's my day. So as you can see here, his cone is even prickly. But I think it's actually quite beautiful, don't you? So this is a spruce cone. And there's actually a lot of different types of spruce. So you can find a spruce cone that looks like this and they're different sizes. It just means it's a different type of spruce, just like the fir. You have a whole bunch of different types of fur too. Like one of my favorite furs is the balsam fur. And if you were to want to tell the difference between the balsam fur and the Douglas fur, if you look at the underside of the needle, there is a long line on the back and it kind of like splits together and that's the balsam fur. Okay, no more talk about the fur. We're gonna go on to another one of my favorites. So, I want you guys to guess. Can anyone guess what this one is? Anybody, anybody, anybody? Okay, so this one, some of you may know this legend. So this one, this is the leader. So the leader of a tree means it's the very tippy top of the top. And it's not a larch, but that's an excellent idea. Uh, but this one has a really bent leader. Anybody else want to take a guess? Okay, so this one, if you were to look at the branches here, look how hairy they look. So this is a very hairy tree. And guess what his name is? I named him this. This is not a scientific name, but his name is Harry the Hemlock. So this is a Western Hemlock. And you can see he's like super hairy. And the reason why he's really, really, really sad and he's got his head bent is because he just so happens to have one of the smallest cones in the forest. Who wants to see it? Anybody? Do you want to see it, Christine? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. So this is what the hemlock cone looks like. Can you see that? It is tiny. If you were to put it in your hand, look how tiny it is. So again, there's another legend about Harry the Hemlock. And if we have time, I'll get into it with you. But he's got a buddy. Remember Cedric the Cedar, the Western Red Cedar? In support of Harry, he says, don't worry, Harry, I've got a small cone too. You can see the, have the uh, Western Red Cedar is actually smaller than the Hemlock. So the two of them are kind of supporting each other. So that's that one. Um, so we got the cone. So why don't we talk about the one that you're going to see if you live in the trail area or any of the drier areas. And the first one, because I live in a dry area, I live in this place called Merrill Heights. And up behind my house, I have tons of these. So this is the trick. So you've got these really long needles. You can tell the difference because the thing like cedars and the spruces. Oh, he's going to poke me again because he's so angry. He wants to self-isolate. Uh, is that, that there's thousands of needles on there. But with these, these come in little clumps. As you can see here, this piece right here that attaches to the branch is actually called a fascicle. So I'm gonna take off one of these fascicles. Boop, 
just like that. And now I'm going to count them. Or you can count them. How many? One, two, and three. So there's three needles per fascicle. See that? So anybody guess? Okay, let's get one answer. What's one answer? Three needles per fascicle. Christine, do you know? I think I have a good guess. If you have a guess, you can actually type that into the chat because um, actually both me and Darcy can see that. Um, what do you think it is? I see someone's guessing. Oh, I see some guessing, <gasps> guesses coming in. I've got some Western red guesses, pine, cedar. I've seen Ponderosa's guess. You think we've gotten it yet, Darcy? Somebody said, I think it was Luca. Luca, what did you say again? Luca, Luca guessed it perfectly. And here, I'll give you another hint. Um, I'll show you what the cone looks like. Okay, now you'll, sh wait, oh, I saw, okay. <gasps> Who's that? Rhonda, Rhonda, yes. Willow got it. That's right, it's a ponderosa pine. Great job. So that's what it is. It's a ponderosa pine. And so it has three needles per fasco. Good job. Yes. And this one is super cool because I'm kind of a nerd and I love to make crafts. And guess what this turns into? Ready? Close your eyes. One, two, three. Whoop. It's an owl. It's a snowy owl. So what you do is you take a little cotton, you stuff it in, add some googly eyes, and you go, hello, everybody. So that's what I like to do with the ponderosa pine. So why don't you guys go find some of these, stuff some cotton in it, stick some googly eyes, and you're set to go. Okay, now here's another question. I got another tree sample. Let's see. What do you think this one is? Okay, so let's give you a strong hint. So I am going to take off oh, one of the fascicles and I'm going to count how many needles? Three. Guess what? That's a trick question because this is a ponderosa pine and this is a ponderosa pine. This pine was very, very happy where it was growing. This one, uh, he was kind of stressed. So. This one is substantially bigger, but it's the same species. Did I trick any of you guys? <laughs> okay, so um, on the ponderosa pine, you're gonna see a lot of this happening right now. Do you see that? Does anyone know what that is? It's the same as the new growth on this one. It's just the new growth. And so if you guys have allergies like I do, if this is, I, this was on the ground, I didn't pick it. Um, if you were to let this mature, if you were to shake this, guess what would come off of it? Anybody guess? It does look like a cactus, but it actually really does look like a cactus. Uh, but this is what carries all the pollen. And if you shake it, like you wouldn't believe what comes out and it gets my allergies going and it comes out of here and inside here sometimes I can shake out and seeds will fly out but the two of these mixed together and equal a brand new tree it's like super cool okay let's go on to another one this one here okay so this one here this is called the, wait, I almost told you what the answer was. I'm not gonna tell you, you have to guess. Okay, I'm gonna pull off one of the fascicles. Okay, I got one. How many needles do you see? Yes, two, good job, Lawrence. And anybody know what it is? Yes, who said that? Somebody said it. Yes, yes. Okay, you guys are so smart. It is a lodgepole pine. And let me show you what the cones look like. So it looks very similar to the ponderosa pine, but it's not. Lodgepole pine, ponderosa pine. Good job. They are cute. They're very, very cute. And actually, I've been collecting cones. You should see my garage. 
and underneath my house, I have cones everywhere. It's crazy how many cones I have. Um, but anyways, you can get even smaller ones too. So they come really cute, depending on how healthy the tree is. <clears throat> okay, so that's a lodgepole pine. Oh, you're surrounded by them. Oh, hey, then I have a question for you, Haley. Do you know what this is? I collected that from a lodgepole pine. Has anybody see? Let's see. Oh, Haley. Haley is nailing it. This, it's like a knot. Um, it's like a burl too, and it does look like a coconut. And yes, who said that? Willow, you are rocking it today. It is a gull. I'm so impressed with your brain. Oh, you've got these. Good. Okay, so this is the Western gull rust, and it grows on lodgepole pines. And guess what you can do with this? Let me find it for you. I don't know if any of you guys like fairies, <laughs> but I do. Um, you can make a little fairy bowl. So basically, it's in my book, The Cedric the Cedar, on how to make it. And then you can actually drink from it or and get dust in your face. Did you guys see that cloud? I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> there, did you see that? <laughs> my house is very dusty. So anyways, you can turn, I can't see anymore. Um, you can turn this into a bowl and drink it. And it's, I call it a fairy gobble. Seriously, I cannot see. Oh! Okay, so that's the lodgepole pine. And now, of course, we need the last one, which is, I still can't see. Wait, but Dorothy, I if you need a moment, um, I can show some of the pictures that we had of the different types of trees we've shown so far of what they actually look like out in nature, if you need a sec. Well, I'm okay. It just, if okay. I blink a lot, it's because I got dust in my eyes. Okay. I told you this was an interactive program. It's very interactive. You can watch somebody go blind. Um, okay, so wait, I didn't show it to you. So here we go. Anybody guess? Okay, Willow, you've been nailing it. Yeah, if anyone wants to take a guess at what kind of tree this is, you can type in your answer. We'll give it just a moment to see if anyone wants to take a guess. Not a boy. Yes, it is a pine. It's a different pine. Yep. Uh, cute. Uh, and, oh, okay, wait. Yes, whoever said Western white pine. Yes, that was went by really quick. Okay, so how many needles per fascicle? I'm trying to spread them out, but they keep one, two, three, four, and five. Five needles. That's right, Lawrence. There's five needles per fascicle. And that's how I know it's a white pine. And guess what a white pine cone can turn into? First, I'll show you what the before. You guys seen these out in the bush? Okay, did you see the, oh, look at that. This one still has seeds in it. Check this out. See that? Oh, I love these little wings. And if you drop them, watch. Not, it went too fast, you can't see it. But watch what happens. Did everybody close their eyes for a quick second? Okay, and oh, it turns into a fairy, just like that. Hello, everybody. Okay, so you can learn how to make these on my Facebook page. All the instructions are in it. So transform this beauty into this. And if you can get most of the stuff from the um, thrift store or probably in your house because you've been cleaning up, right? Finding a whole bunch of stuff you didn't know you had tucked in the corners of this and that. Okay, so um, like I said, I'm a huge nut on different crafts. There's the paper birch. You can make these cute little canoes. Starts off like that and then you just lace it. Isn't that cool, huh? Now this is one of my favorite ones. This is what I would recommend you guys doing. So this is a nature journal. And guess what this is made out of? Has anyone made one of these before? Yes, it's a book. Have you made one? Oh, I think you did actually, I remember. That's you right. Me how. I, remember. I made it together with you. <laughs> That's right. Okay, so let me open it up. So we're just gonna open it up like this. And then guess it is made out of Da, da, da. Lunch bags, lunch bags. Now the cool thing about this is that 
you can hide all your trinkets and stuff. Like, oh my goodness, what did I find in here? Does anybody know what that is? Yes, it's a type like a lichen. That's right. Okay, so you could tuck that in there. You can draw pictures here and have a secret passage there. I don't think I drew anything because this is my sample one, but they have all these little pockets in them. So they're super cute to make. I have little acorns everywhere. Um, I forgot to mention, if you were to get the books on each of the pages, there's tiny little acorns hidden on each one. I've been fascinated with acorns my whole entire life. For example, let's see. Yep, there, that's an acorn. But when you're looking at it from a big picture, they're actually um, hard to find. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Haley. Nice. Oh, you could buy them online. And they're $10 each. And um, let me tell you, if you ever want to learn how to write your own book, it is really hard to do. But it is uh, rewarding once it's done. But um, and I'll just tell you about very quickly on how much they cost. They cost about anywhere from eleven to fourteen thousand dollars to make. But this is what could be your legacy. And I just want to show you something. You know the the young woman who drew these pictures. She used her computer to draw these pictures, and when she drew them, she was only. 15 years old. So some of you are probably close to 15. You could, oh, you could just buy it on my website and it's www.legendsoftheforest. Is it? I don't know if you can see that, but Christine will have it up on. Yep. But so what I can do right now is I can share uh, Darcy's website out in the chat because you can send uh, questions to us, but I can also send things out to all of you. Um, there will also be an email that gets sent out uh, tomorrow um, to all of you that will have the website again, plus um, some activities that Darcy will share with us at the end. Um, so I'll share them out today, but then if you accidentally uh, miss them or uh, forget to save that link, um, there will be an email sent to you tomorrow as well with all of those. Okay, I just sent the link to Darcy's website for if you're interested in more information about her books. Perfect. So does anybody have any questions? I have been getting some questions in. Oh, good. Um, let's see, what should I start with here? Um, oh, here's an interesting one, because um, I think this might be to do with that spruce I talked about at the beginning that was so tall. What oh, makes yeah. the tree become so tall? Like, what do you think happens where that makes some trees just grow super tall? Well, it's all got to do with um, what they prefer to live in. Like, for example, um, for you, uh, for me, if I could live on popcorn for the rest of my life, I mean, I will blue, balloon up to a, the hugest marshmallow. But with the tree, specifically on the Vancouver Island, it's, it rains a lot there. And the um, forest where this particular tree was growing is just with dense moss. Like if you were to go for a, a hike in there, you would see moss like this thick. So it retains a lot of moisture. So the moisture is just coming through the root system, up through the crown of the tree. It's getting water from the top, from the bottom. It's just super happy. So all of the um, um, favorite foods and how it grows is all condensed right into those, those trees. Like for example, the golden spruce, did you guys hear about the golden spruce? It was the, such a shame, but look into it. Uh, type in golden spruce. This spruce was phenomenally huge and they wrote a book about it. Um, it was enormous. It wasn't quite as big of what was growing on Vancouver Island, but where it was growing, it loved it. And so if we leave trees alone to grow, they will just absolutely flourish. Do you think that how old the tree has something to do with it as well? How old the tree is? Yeah. Yes. Um, I wish I had a tree sample, but you can um, take a, it's called a tree cookie. And what it is is a cross section of a tree. And you can see um, when it had a really good growing season, because the, the 
the growth rings will be super wide, but then you could also tell if it suffered from a forest fire or insect infestation, and it will cause the tree to slow down because it's fighting off a disease. So if it's strong and healthy and it has a nice hot summer with lots of moisture, then it's gonna grow quite quickly. So yes, it would. And actually, I, I, I know how old the spruce at the beginning that was the tallest tree in Canada. I do know how old that one is. I don't know how old the red cedar I talked about is, but the spruce is, um, they think it's between 500 and 700 years old. So that's a really oh. long time to grow too. How many centuries? Just to think about what that tree has seen. If you guys wanted to do a writing um, exercise, because obviously I love writing, why don't you pretend you pick a tree out in the nearest forest that you have, pick a tree and pretend that you are the tree and then you uh, write about what you see and what changes you have seen all the time. That would be a cool exercise, I think. But can you imagine what that one tree saw? Like centuries and centuries, what did that tree see? Why don't you write about that and let me know. Any other questions? I do have some questions here. Um, someone's asking me about, um, they've heard that trees have genders. Is that true? Huh. I don't know about genders, but I do know if you were to go, um, look at what's happening underneath the soils, there is an entire different network of, of communications and how they communicate. Um, say one tree over here is, is growing, um, wonderfully having a good time but this his friend over here their the root systems are connected and they can talk to each other um underneath the soils just like in california they have schools um where the the kids will study in the canopies so i don't know if they know the gender of each other um but i do know that they can communicate with each other from the tip to the the, the bottom shall we say but the gender is like, the, yeah, because they kind of like, they're asexual, like they are self-sufficient because they produce female cones and then they produce the pollen. So they're kind of like oh, both. That's interesting. That's probably what they were wanting to know is because some plants oh. need a male plant and a, a female plant, one that has pollen and one that has seeds. Um, so I think oh. they, maybe that's the question they're wondering is, are, okay. do they have to, is, does there have to be a male tree and a female tree? Um, yeah, no. Or they're are already... they both? <laughs> Yeah, they're self-sufficient. They could get along. They don't need anybody. <laughs> they could just grow on their own. Well, that's yeah. really interesting. They have both the seeds and the pollen. They have both the male parts of the plant and the female parts of the plant. Uh, exactly. So so cool so they can on their own. Very yeah. interesting. I know. Um, <laughs> it's amazing how trees talk to us. If we'll listen, um, if I could just tell a tiny little story, because I'm really bad at telling stories, because um, I just go on and on. But anyways, um, it was, I was working in the forest industry, and in, it was in called Hope, and I was sitting, um, it's on my face, uh, it's on my website, there's a picture of, of these, the sun coming through the forest, and you can see uh, the little raindrops dripping down. So that that was a picture and a monumental moment in my life because when I first left forestry, I, um, I worked in the industry. To be honest, I was responsible for cutting down trees. Um, I never cut down the trees, but I was the person that went out and picked the trees that, and I don't know how I feel about that, but it brought me to the point of where I am. So I was sitting, having lunch, and it was like a monsoon of rain and I was miserable and I had a peanut butter and jam sandwich and I was just hunkered down in my, my rain suit with my helmet and it was just dripping down. And then the sun broke through the canopy and all these little stars started sprinkling, which essentially was the water droplets. And then I had an epiphany, and I don't know if you guys know what an epiphany is, but it's just like, ah, I had an aha uh -huh moment. And then I thought, I wonder what the trees would want to say if they could talk. And then I quit working for the forest industry, and then I turned to education, and then I became a voice for these trees in these books. 
because they all have characters and it is what I think the trees are trying to tell us. But the trees can actually tell you a different story. So it would be very interesting to hear what you guys think the trees are telling you. Um, I think maybe I'll do one more question for today, okay. Darcy. And then did, were you going to read one of your books today? Is that maybe because we'll have a, about 20 minutes left. So do you think maybe one more question and then finish with a yeah, book? Yeah, sure. Okay, great. Um, I think the question I'll end off with is um, maybe just some history about uh, forestry. Someone was asking, how long have you been doing this for? Um, sort of, you know, where did you start in the forest industry and sort of get into working with trees? Okay, that's a good question. So um, when I was in high school, I went to my guidance counselor and I said, um, I don't know what to do with my life, I said, but I know that I want to work in the forest. And um, at that time, I didn't have the best grades because I really struggled with math. And then he says, why don't you become a dental assistant? I'm like, ew, okay. So I tried it. I worked for five years in the dental field. And lo and behold, I didn't like it. Um, then I got into paddling. I used to be a really good paddler. I wanted to go to the Olympics and represent Canada. So I went down to Chile and I was training down there. And then unfortunately I broke my neck. And so my Olympic dream was over. And then I was got back to Canada and I was like, what am I gonna do with the rest of my life? And I said to myself, I'm gonna do what I wanted to do in the very first place. I wanna work in the forest. So I cycled across Canada. I came back home and I said, I'm going to school. So I went to school and I became a forester. So I worked in the industry for about uh, seven years. Then I worked for parks. And so I had a really good perspective on how different people want to manage forests. For example, I wrote, I actually won an award for producing a video. It was called War in the Woods. And it was a perspective on how everyone thinks the forest should be managed. So, um, and then at the whole end of it, I um, gathered my own, like educated, because we all need to cut down the trees. I, I am, I just forbid them to cut down um, old growth, but I do realize we need to cut down trees. And so I want to educate the importance of sustainability. And um, so that's when I got into forestry. And then I had babies and I started teaching. And um, then I was up in Fort St. John and I was by mouth telling my stories. And then this um, lady came up to me with tears and she says, you must write these down in books. And I'm like, I never thought of that. And that's how it all began. And so uh, now I just teach full time and write kids books and I'm a mom of three. So I'm gonna probably pick the shortest book. I mean, this one is the most relevant because this one talks about this one. So, the white bark pine is a threatened species and it's being attacked by the white pine blister rust, the mountain pine beetle, global climate change, and um, lack of forest fires, believe it or not. Um, so this one you should probably just read because it is quite a long book. Like the story isn't, you know, it's not super long, um, but this one is short and sweet. So I'll focus on this one. So sure. this, one. Once Darcy's reading her book, I'll start sharing uh, the links to the two activities that you can do after. Remember that I will email them out tomorrow, but I'll put them out in the chat now. So if you wanted to do them today, you can get those links um, and, uh, and use them today. So while Darcy's reading, um, you can watch for the chat. I'll put those in there. Perfect. Okay, so Leonard the Larch was a wicked old tree who was always causing trouble in the forest. He enjoyed creeping up on his um, creeping up and spooking all his tree friends whenever he had the chance. Mother Earth, a thoughtful and compassionate mother, always had a few tricks up her sleeves as well. Whenever her trees came to her for help, she always had a solution for their troubles. There's a part right here which is super cute in the illustration. She's giving a band-aid to the tree that got a little owie there. Super cute. Can anybody find the acorn in there? Uh, we'll look later. Okay, so Halloween, Leonard's favorite time of year was nearing and Leonard was having trouble deciding what costume he should wear. He decided to ask Mother Earth for some suggestions. He said, she said, why don't you become a wizard? 
A wizard? Nah, I don't want to be a wizard. Ooh, what about Dracula? You could be Dracula. No, I don't want to be Dracula. Oh, I got it. A pirate. No, I don't want to be a pirate. Oh, she had an idea. What if, with the stroke of my magic gall wand, which is right here, I could remove every single needles from your branches. That way you could look like a spooky skeleton. Oh, wow. Could you do that? That would be awesome. And overjoyed Leonard shouted. Mother Earth didn't waste any time. The sky grew dark with lightning flashing and thunder rumbling across the skies. Leonard was scared and wondered what he had done. As Mother Earth swirled her magic gull on high above her, a lightning bolt struck the end of with a huge explosion. Just like that. You guys can do the sound effects. As quickly as the violent storm appeared, it was gone, replaced with an eerie silence. And all that was left was a dense haze that surrounded Leonard. As the air cleared, Leonard was astonished by what he found. <gasps> all my needles are gone. Mother Earth was right. I do look like a spooky skeleton. Leonard grinned devilishly from ear to ear as he thought of the fun he was going to have on Halloween night. Look at that nasty smirk. Oh my goodness, up to no trouble. So, when Halloween arrived, Leonard was nowhere to be found. This made all his friends very nervous because they knew Leonard was up to no good. But they would not let him spoil their party. And so they went ahead with preparing for their fun-filled evening. Many trees offered up their branches so they could have a roaring bonfire to roast some yummy acorns. Others gathered up berries, roots, and mushrooms for a delicious stew. They made daisy chains and garlands from the golden leaves that fell to the ground. There's this is my favorite part. See the roasting acorns? It's so cute. Okay. Then Night was drawing near and the party was just about to begin so the trees put on their costumes. There were witches and goblins everywhere. The forest was transformed into a spectacular Halloween scene and the celebration began. Here, I just want to show you this little bunny. It's a fairy bunny. Okay, suddenly a loud crash in the bushes brought the party to a screeching halt. <gasps> what was that? They all wondered. Everyone was scared. The bushes shook ferociously and a deep haunting moaning replaced the sounds of joy and laughter. All of a sudden, something lunged from the bushes, jumping all over the beautiful decorations, stomping out the fire, and chasing everyone away. No one knew it was only Leonard. All they can see was a spooky skeleton haunting them. <laughs> As everyone disappeared into the night, he invited them all back. His friends declined because they were not happy with Leonard at all. But Leonard was very happy with himself. Look, he said, mission accomplished. Oh my goodness, what a mean. <gasps> okay, so early the next morning, Leonard searched high and low for Mother Earth. When he finally found her, he was exhausted. Mother Earth. <gasps> I had so much fun last night. I want to be a spooky skeleton every Halloween night. Well, if that's what you wish, Leonard, she replied. And that is why every year around Halloween, when his needles change color and fall, you know, Leonard the Larch is getting ready to spook us all. So that is why the Western Larch, which is right here, 
turns yellow and his needles fall because he wants to be a spooky skeleton for Halloween. And these are my kids. They're much older now though. <laughs> so that is all about the Western Larch. And this is what the cones look like with those little nubblets. Yes. Yep, a skeleton tree for sure. Oh, tree planting is one of the hardest jobs in the world. I did it for a season. Oh, you own all three. That's, oh, actually, can I, okay, that's, let me talk about that, Kelly. So um, I'm looking for someone else to be in my next book. And so it's called the fan of the month, no, of the year, because it takes me a year to write these books. So I'm gonna show you if you are interested in being featured in my next book. So um, the tree caching game is in the book, but Christine is gonna send it to you. But um, this, these are the fan, fans of the year club. So basically I'm gonna write a little bio about you and why you love the forest and you can be in the next book. So if you have all three, write to me and tell me why you think you should be in the next book, which is, who wants to join this tree here? I'm not gonna tell you, you guys are gonna guess what it is. Okay, Darcy is asking if any of you have a guess for what this tree is. You can see it there, kind of tree. What is that? Anybody, anybody? Did we, um, did we talk about that tree before or is this a different tree? Yep, this one, it begins with uh, H, the letter H. Oh, okay. And I think we some guesses coming through. I think they've got it. Is it a hemlock, Darcy? Yay! It is Yay. a hemlock. <laughs> <laughs> so the next book is going to be about Harry the Hemlock. And so if you want to be in the book, just you can contact me. It's on my, on my Facebook page or on the Facebook page will have crafts that you guys can do, but the website is where you can buy the books or you can learn how to become the fan of the year club of Legends of the Forest. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, I think this sounds like a good place to wrap up for today, Darcy. So um, I'd sent the links out in the chat for some activities as well as Darcy's website, but I'll also um, send an email out tomorrow with those in case you missed them for today. Um, so Thanks for all the things that you taught us today, Darcy. I know I'm gonna be looking at trees differently when I go out in the forest. I'm gonna be trying to figure out which one's which, and I'm gonna be looking at all those pine needles. So interesting. Thank you so much for teaching us about that today. Oh, absolutely, my pleasure. <laughs> okay, have a great day, everyone. Uh, enjoy some time outside. Um, thank you for joining us. Thank you, right. guys. Bye. See you later, alligators. <laughs>